Hey everybody, how is it going? I am uh, just finishing out the end of my work day. Got a bunch of stuff done today and um, I haven't made a video in a few days so I needed to, to make do something, be proactive. And um, with that thought in my head, I came up with the idea for, for this video. And after, after realizing what I'm in, what is going on, the reality of being a targeted individual. Uh, after realizing all that and letting it sink in and understanding that I know just about, I don't want to say everything there is to know, but I would almost call myself an expert on this topic. Um, as far as as far as the uh, the basics go of, of being a targeted individual, why it's happening, who it's happening to, uh, the tactics used to uh, systematically harass an individual. I've gotten pretty knowledgeable about about this uh, this topic, and uh, what I realized is you cannot just focus on what is happening to you and then um, just talk about these little instances that are happening. And I, when I say little, um, you know what I mean. Each little skit or directed conversation or uh, the auto mobbing, you know, they'll happen, you know, small and in small increments over time to to elevate your your cortisol levels, your uh, your adrenaline, and keep you in that fight or flight mode all the time. You need to get through your head, like I had to do. That being stressed out and being afraid and not doing anything will never help. There, nothing will ever get accomplished that way, and. Um, I wrote down some notes here to pass on some information to the rest of you that are having a hard time with this. And, you know, I'm doing a lot better. I'm still going through the same stuff that I've been going through. Um, I got I got gang stalked when I took my daughter to the uh, batting cage yesterday. Uh, just, you know, going to do a normal everyday thing. I, I experienced uh, some direct conversation, the auto mobbing, bright lighting, you know, the whole, whole nine yards. But I didn't let it, I didn't let it affect me. I was aware of it. And um, I took note of what was going on, but I didn't let it affect me. And that is one of the number one things that you have to learn is to learn to be, learn to have thick enough skin to not let these people bother you. And I know that sounds impossible when your house is being broken into, when your electronics are being hacked, when uh, people everywhere you go know your personal information. Um, and are passing that on to you. They're always letting you know that uh, they're always letting you know that they're there to um, observe you and write little notes in their phone and pass that on to whoever. What you're wearing, what you're doing, what uh, you're eating, and stuff like that. So somebody else can pass that information on later. You know, be be aware of of what's going on. But I have noticed a lot of people are posting videos um, of, of these instances, and that's good. You want to keep doing that, but there's more to do with this. So I just wanted to kind of go through a little bit of, of uh, this list here to help you who don't know what to do to start to take action. Ah, oh, man, the sun's going down. It's starting to get a little bit dark in here, so might be might be a little grainy. Uh, let's light through that. Uh, anyway. Okay, so the time to act is now. You know, a lot of times I'll, I'll catch myself, uh, I'll have a thought in my head like, hey, this is a good idea, I should work on this project, and, you know, I'll be tired and I'll decide, no, I'm going to put a movie on tonight. I'm going to watch this movie. Usually movies I watch have to have to do with something that will help me, a documentary or, you know, some kind of um, police or spy movie or... Um, a movie about being a targeted individual. There's all kinds of them. The Circle is one recently. Um, the Game with Michael Douglas. Uh, there's a lot of movies out there that that are made regarding this kind of situation. And you know, they don't get. Not everybody that writes a movie gets their idea just laying in bed thinking about it. A lot of people have either heard of personal experiences, have gone through personal experiences, and that's why they wrote that movie. So there's a lot of there's a lot of good information in movies. Um, in documentaries um, that, that you can watch, that you can you keep filling your head with knowledge, and even if you don't want to, you are pushed into this, and this is the furthest thing from what you want to do. Say you're an artist and you like to paint, 
which I like to. Um, that's all you want to do. You don't want to be bothered with all of this counterintelligence and researching and learning the law, but that is what you are going to have to do. You are in a slow kill program and your life literally depends on this. Um, it might not seem like the end of your life right now, but that is the ultimate goal with this whole thing, to incarcerate you, put you in a mental institution, get you on drugs, get you to kill yourself. You know, th this is serious. And if you're targeted, you understand this. Okay, um, the first thing you need to do, and uh, for those of you who have, who've been in the military, been through basic training, you already know this. You have to push through the times of stress. When you are stressed out, you want to run and hide in a corner. You just don't want all of this unneeded, unwanted stress that you've been thrown into. You want, um, you want it just to stop. The thing you have to realize, it's not going to have to stop. You have to take action now and do something about this. Um, okay, so a lot of you are, that are going to be watching this, you already understand this. Um, you need to network um, through through social media. Uh, social media is about the only way you can meet other targeted individuals. You can't just like run into somebody on the street and say, oh, are you a targeted individual? It's not going to happen. They're, we're only pretty much online, and that's where, where you can start. So you want to use, um, now a lot of these, a lot of these websites are, um, sorry, I got an itch here. A lot of these websites are um, being, God, what is the word? Stick with me here. Uh, they're being monitored. They're being, uh, God, what is the word I'm looking for? They're being, uh, when you can't, they can't use the freedom of speech. Ah. I can't think of the uh, word right now. Sometimes I think I get interference when I'm doing this. It's a simple word. Anyway, uh, damn it. <laughs> okay, so you want to use Facebook, you want to use Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, LinkedIn, uh, Gab. There's a new website called DTube. Well, it's been around for a little while, but um, if YouTube is censoring, thank you. Thank you for helping me. Uh, a lot of these websites are being censored. And when you're putting out this kind of information or there's other people that are putting out pertinent information uh, pertaining to the truth of things and it's going to affect somebody's business or the government or whatever, they're censoring those, um, they're censoring those people so they can't get their word out. Um, regardless of what happens, you still have to get on and network with people, make friends, initiate conversations. Um, no, not everybody's going to come to you and say, hey, do you need help? The people don't just act, act that way usually. Uh, some people do, they're philanthropists, uh, but most of the time you're not going to just get help. Does that work? Okay. Okay, well, I'll try that. Sorry about the lighting, I'm doing the best I can. It's getting dark. All right. So you want to use social networking to to build a group of people and um, friends. You know, uh, some of these people that I've met online that I never thought I would become friends with, I I consider friends, even though some of them I've never met in person. They're you know people used to have pen pals back in the day. They would write back and forth to somebody they never knew, or somebody they've never met, and those people would write back and forth for years, and then they finally meet, and then they're it's like they they've known each other their whole life. You know, you can do something similar with that here. You can make connections with people. Okay. Um, to, I'm going to skip around on my notes here a little bit. You uh, no. Okay. Um, you want to use the skills that you have. Okay. You can build new skills. Like I've learned a lot about the law recently. Unfortunately, I've had to learning how uh, they speak in court, what the processes are in court, and um, just a lot about legal issues. I've been forced into that. But a lot of you already have some kind of talent, some kind of uh, gift that is partially part of the reason you're probably targeted. Most of you have a higher IQ than normal. Most of you are artistic, not autistic, but artistic. Um, some people probably try to tell you you're autistic, but that means you're highly vigilant and you're, you, 
you pay attention to all kinds of things and you notice things that other people can't see. You're a non-linear thinker, uh, meaning that you don't just think good, bad, black, white. You look at a situation and you evaluate that in your head. Um, when you hear a story on the news, um, you don't just go, oh yeah, that guy's guilty, that guy, or that, you know, that happened for sure. You, sit, you stop and you go, wait, why didn't they talk to this person? What happened over here? That story sounds kind of odd. I'm going to keep researching, you know. That's probably the kind of person you are. Um, most of the targeted individuals that, that I've come into contact with are non-linear thinkers. Okay, so, you, but you need to use the, the talent and the gifts that you have and input that talent out into our targeted individual network uh, and use the network of people that you build up kind of like open, so open source networking. Um, open source networking with computers, and I am not even close to being a computer guy. I can navigate through a few things and find spyware on my phone, you know, stuff like that. Um, but you have a skill, you know. So let's say, um, here's just a list of uh, what I wrote down what some people could be good, at, good with, and I'm sure I'm going to miss something here. Um, legal. Some of you out there are attorneys. Uh, Richard Kane was an attorney. He took his case to court. I was just reading through some of his, uh, his uh, legal documents you know, regarding his case. Um, some of you have legal expertise. Uh, some of you have a public relations background. Some of you are good with marketing, photography, video, journalism, math, statistics. You know, um, a big part of this is statistics. A guy named Jesse Beltran is uh, in Sacramento and he is the, he's working with John Hall currently and they're building up a bunch of, um, uh, research statistics to show what percentage of people this is happening to and just on and on and on to show statistics. Statistics work. Um, if you're an artist, if you're good at nothing, and the only thing that you're good at, which is still pretty awesome, if you're a good artist, um, make art. Make art that has to do with being a targeted individual, with gang stalking. Don't just make it and put it in your house. Take, take that to an art gallery, become part of an art walk. Um, go out to the local um, first Friday, Friday art walk, whatever they call it in your town. It's usually the first Friday of the month or the first Thursday of the month or something like that. And get a spot, maybe 15 bucks, and put your art out there. And put a link to maybe a targeted individual page or a video you've made or a video of somebody that you that you admire that has made a good instructional video or an informational video and put it on your art. Even if the people don't buy your art, they're going to understand that you are projecting um, your message. And they might buy that piece of art. They can buy that piece of art, put it in their $2 million home, and when all their friends come over for a, for a gathering, for a dinner, for whatever they're going to do, you know, people look at the art and they discuss it. They talk about it. Uh, I used to own an art gallery. I watched people do this. It's uh, amazing what... It's amazing what one piece of art can do. That's why some art is so expensive, okay? Um, if you're good at public speaking, um, if you are good with computer science, um, a lot of this is electronic. A lot of this is um, computer-based. Somebody showed me how to track a satellite, and I linked up, uh, I figured out, well, not I figured out, this person showed me how to use my computer through, with tracer routes to find out which satellite has been tracking my my computer and my phone through through the um, yeah anyway I can't even explain it this person helped me so that person wasn't even an expert with computers but they figured out how to do this okay and then they helped me and one of my one of the satellites linked to me was from the NSA and one of the other satellites that that uh, that my information had gone through was linked to a relative of mine okay. You can find out a lot of good information with help from other people with expertise. Um, if you were in the military, if you were a police officer, firefighter, medic, doctor, etc., you have expertise. And um, I know that all of the people that I just listed here the, in, in my list of professions, throughout the, the network of targeted individuals, there are people with that have been in all of these professions. Okay? Now, if nothing on this list pertain to you, 
you're good at something. I don't know what it is. If you project that out to the target individual community and say, hey, I'm good at this. I'm willing to offer my help with this. I can, I can do, um, you know, here, here's what I have to offer. You're becoming part of the open, open source networking that any large corporation in the military, uh, any, any large group of people that are going to function properly and have a positive outcome are going to have people in specific positions that are, and everybody's working on their specific job, basically. So you have something to offer. If you're a dishwasher, you know how to work. You can volunteer. You, you know, if that's the only thing that you know how to do is wash dishes, that means that you have the ability to get up and work. You can offer something. You know, if you don't have, um, you know, legal or medical knowledge, it doesn't matter. You're still just as important as everybody else. It takes everybody to do this. And like I said, getting together and networking and being proactive, putting yourself out there, posting on Facebook, posting on Twitter, I'm available for this, I'm available for that. Get a hold of different people, email them. Don't just you know put it on social networking. Get, get that person's email, but email them and let them know who you are, what your, what your qualifications are, what you can do for them. And it might not happen the next day, but that person could be going through their email and go, oh hey, we're working on this project, I could use this person. And that's what's happening right now. Targeted individuals are getting together and networking. And um, as, much, as much pushback as we're getting, it's still going to happen. More and more people are becoming uh, targeted every day, and more and more people are, go are sick of this, and they're going to get together and do something. Okay, you, you have to be part of this. You have to be part of this. Um, no matter how depressed you are, no matter how beat up you are, no matter how tired you are, um, I slept horribly last night. My eyes look like just, uh, I look like death right now, you know, and um, I, am, I am making myself do this. I am pushing through the stress because I have to do this, and so do you. Okay, um, one of the things that you need to do is gather information, um, and... I've noticed that just complaining about this and putting the information out there on you know, social media and contacting other people uh, won't just do the trick. Um, the way that these people that are doing this react, uh, they react when something affects their wallet. And the only way to do that is to take legal action. Uh, now, Jack Christiana just won the first targeted individual case ever, ever. Uh, damn. damn it. I try not to get emotional when I do these things, but that is that's huge. Jack is one of our heroes. Um, if you haven't found him on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, he um, you know the guy the guy isn't even an attorney. He had two years of law school, but he learned enough to figure out how to navigate through the system, speak lawyer speak, understand all of the uh, statutes, and I don't even know what the hell to call them. But um, he took. He took uh, city, uh, some police officers from the city of Huntington Beach, I believe. Sorry if I'm getting it wrong, uh, but I think it was in Huntington Beach. And he took this to court, and he is uh, in that process right now. But he's, he, I believe, if I'm wrong, correct me, but I believe he won his case, and he's still got more court dates to go through. And um, hopefully he, he wins a bunch of money from that because it takes capital. It takes capital, <laughs> money. Um, to to be able to afford the things that you need to do in this whole situation, get yourself scanned for your chips, um, that just everything, you know, going to the doctor not too long from now, it takes money for your uh, health insurance, it takes money for every, you know, you know this, okay, you know that it takes money, and that's where we have to go with this, is to go after these people legally. And that is a that is a weird place for a bunch of us. You might have bad memories in court. I used to go through custody stuff all the time, and I hated court. That was my worst fear. And it was because I was in court all the time fighting for custody of my kids, fighting because there was always something, always something. And then finally, 
Finally, I got full custody of my kids. It took a long time, but I'm a single dad now, and both of my kids live with me. Um, one's 21, one's 15. It, it took a while, but uh, you know I've had them. I've, I've had them for for years now, full custody. So you can do this too, you know. Okay, so to do this, you need to find all the information out that you can and print out the pertinent information. And when I say that, I started printing out all these different um, things I'd get on somebody's website that, uh, you know, just an individual had made. And they printed out something like, uh, like this right here. The, no, oh, you can hardly even see that. The ELF God, you know, and it's an article about um, extremely low frequency weapons. And that's, that's helpful. It's on a, uh, a website called, oh, of course it's not. Um, here. Anyway, uh, this was a really good article by Sherry Schreiner, S-H-E-R-R-Y, S-H-R-I-N-E-R. Okay. Um, I printed out some U.S. government patents. Okay. Jeez. Anyway, um, these are from a government website, from the U.S. government patent website. Um, this is a patent for personal tracking and recovery system. There's a patent for silent subliminal presentation system. Here's a, that's like voice to skull, I believe. Um, here's one for method and associated apparatus for remotely determining information to a person's emotional state. Right? They can, they can mess with your emotions. Um, body-worn active and passive tracking device. So those are just four that I printed out from the uh, US patent website. So, but today on Dr. Kathleen Horton's, um, actually it's on Stop 007, but Kathleen Horton, I believe, put this together or a group of people put this, this uh, very, very well put together um, collection of information affidavits from important people and like I said all of you are important but affidavits from people with titles people that uh, were directly involved in certain areas where a lot of this uh, stalking and harassment starts up at the top and they're the whistleblowers right so um, anyway uh, they put together this list of US patents I'm going to put this close because of my light is blowing everything out here. But, okay, so these are U.S. patents for directed energy weapons and other weapons used against targeted individuals, okay? I mean, look how many there are. And if you do have to go to court and you say, well, I got this, this thing from this website, which is just as good information, you know, about extremely low frequency weapons, they're not going to take that in court. Um, you need something from the, you know, you, you need a legitimate source. These have actual U.S. patent numbers on them, and they show that they've, uh, they don't, can't show that they're in use because a lot of this information is classified. But, like I said, these are all U.S. patents. Damn, that have lights. Anyway. Uh, okay. So I got that information as U.S. patents. Um, as far as affidavits go, an affidavit, if you don't know, and I just learned this recently, um, is a sworn statement by somebody that is acceptable in court. So if you just have somebody write you a letter, uh, which is nice of them to do, explaining what's going on, uh, and you try to submit that in court, they're not going to take it. They'll throw it out. So what you need for court is a sworn affidavit, and that needs to be notarized um, by, and I... Uh, I'm not giving legal advice. I'm just telling you my experience. I almost forgot to say that. Um, and I might be wrong on a couple of the details of this, so you need to go do your fact-checking for yourself. Um, I'm not an attorney. I'm not a paralegal. Um, I am just uh, a person passing on information that, that I personally have discovered through this journey. Okay, so um, affidavits. I've got four of them right here, and I'm going to be going to court soon, and I might need some of these. So if, you, if you're going to court and you're going to sue somebody, let's see. Yeah, that one's over there. OK, 
okay, so if you're going to go to court and you're going to sue somebody, you're going to need some sworn affidavits, you're going to need um, proof, which this is one of the hardest things to prove because a lot of this is, you know, if your neighbor's over there with a direct energy weapon pointing at you and you're getting really tired, there's a million reasons why you could be really tired. And that's really tough to, to prove. But we're, I say we are working on that because I'm, I'm, I consider myself uh, one of the people that's helping work on this now because it's all I do when I'm not working, when, I, when I'm not spending time with my kids, going to softball games, going to, to do, do whatever, you know, try, just do what I can to keep my life as normal as possible and not drive my kids crazy. Um, almost every moment that I'm not doing that, I'm, I'm working on this. So uh, here's an affidavit from Karen Melton Stewart, former NSA analyst. 28 years. Okay, she's going through this program. Um, she's gang stalked. She's covertly harassed. She can identify with you. If you have been a target for any period of time, you talk to Karen. Even though she's a 28 year veteran of the NSA and you might be a dishwasher, you two could have a conversation for two hours. Um, not that she has time to do that, but I'm just saying in general, um, another targeted individual will understand when you, when you talk to them. So um, there's one affidavit. Karen Melton Stewart, NSA. Okay, we'll go back and forth here. Here's um, here's an affidavit that actually this was sent to me. Um, a couple of these are signed in ink and notarized. Also, okay, that's the best way to get these. Some some of these people are really tough to contact, um, but you can contact anybody if you if you spend enough time and effort and reaching out, and networking, you can contact anybody. You can talk to the president of the United States eventually if you want to, if you really really want to. You can make it happen, okay? This sworn affidavit is by Gerald Sosby, former FBI agent, okay? He's going through this program as well. He's covertly harassed, um, stalked, slandered, all of the same things that we deal with, okay? Here is... Here's a sworn affidavit from Ted Gunderson, former FBI agent. He runs a private investigator uh, business in Los Angeles, somewhere around Los Angeles. Yeah, in Los Angeles currently. And, um, you know, the guy worked for the FBI, wrote out his sworn affidavit. And, you know, it's stamped, signed by him. So, you know, when people start hearing FBI, NSA, CIA, uh, doctor, uh, lawyer, physician, when they start hearing those, those words, you know, they're going to start paying attention because those are our professionals, right? Those are the people that, uh, that we look to for help. So if you just have a note from me, Mike Barden, the guy that used to be a firefighter and was in the military for a while, you know, that's, that's fine. But you know, I don't have the uh, college degree. I don't have the, uh, the special title of doctor or NSA analyst or anything like that. You know, they're not going to take my word as serious as one of these people. Okay, so this is uh, right here. Man, this is, uh, I'm sorry that I'm going to put this up so close. But anyway, this is a sworn affidavit from William Binney. Uh, William Binney worked for the NSA, uh, or worked in intelligence for 32 years. All right, he was the technical leader at the NSA. He wrote programs that that have to do with what's going on. He didn't know that these programs are going to be used, you know, on us like this, and that's why he left the NSA. And uh, well, if you want to hear more about that. Uh, Oliver Stone produced a movie called A Good American. It's about William Binney and Kirk Weeby. Kirk Weeby was an Air Force uh, uh, security forces guy. He was, I shouldn't explain exactly who he was, I don't know uh, exactly his job, but he was in the Air Force, he was pretty high up, and he ended up working for the NSA as well, along with Kirk Weeby. So both of those guys together have done a lot to, um, <laughs> a lot to, uh, to, to really help out this situation. And they put their neck out on the line to, to do this. You know, they didn't write these affidavits for nothing. All right, so there's 
There's two, and I'm getting more. I'm getting more too. I'm working on getting some from the CIA. I'm going to work on getting some from people that work for Department of Homeland Security. I'm not going to stop until I run out of time. And uh, that's all we have is time. But time is short, and it's and it's it's we, you have to do something now, like like I've done. I didn't know these people before this uh, before. Whoa, 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 hold on, my dog's chasing after the shadows in here. Come on, buddy, you gotta go out here. Come on, you gotta go out there. I'm sorry. Got my lamp on, and he sees a uh, a shadow over here, and he tries to chase after it. He thinks it's something he can catch. Okay. So that's what I have accomplished so far, and, and I've got a stack uh, in my rooms. Yeah, it's a little dark over here, but uh, I mean, I've got a stack of stuff. A lot of this is, uh, I wouldn't call it evidence, but it's information pertaining to my situation, the situations of a lot of other people. Um, I've got a lot more saved on my computer. Okay, what you want to do with this information is you need to have a redundant backup system. So, like, I've printed everything out. I've got everything on a hard drive. I've got everything on a computer. And I might have something on some disks hidden somewhere that, you know, they might not have seen where I put them. I don't, it's hard to say. They know pretty much everything. See all, hear all. So, if you have multiple areas of uh, where this information is, if it's stolen from you, you have a place to reprint it out to uh, make copies. You know, maybe send uh, send a disc to or give a disc to if you have any friends left. Um, and I'm not saying that jokingly because uh, you do become completely isolated after the character assassination. I totally understand that. Um, you don't always have a place to take this stuff. But if you do have friends and family somewhere safe, you can put your your files, your 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 backups. Take that to multiple places, and it's going to take you time, some elbow grease, but you have to do it. You know, there's no, there's no other choice. If you don't, then it's, I don't want to say it's your fault, but you're in a position that you cannot change unless you take action, unless you, unless you do these things, and work with other people to, to be proactive. Um, you know, like I said, volunteer. Uh, money is tight. If you, uh, some of you are on disability SSI, uh, you might get public assistance because you haven't been able to get a job, you're on, you're on welfare, you know, and I don't put you down for that uh, if you're in this, if you're in this program because there's literally nothing you can do to get a job sometimes, there's literally nothing you can do to, uh, to make money. Um, you have to be really clever and really resourceful to be able to, to make money while you're in this situation. But uh, volunteer to 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 work on some kind of organ with some kind of organization. You know, I watch um, Jerome Corsi a lot. J e r o m e c o r r s i, I believe. Jerome Corsi is a he's a former wow. intelligence guy. I'll be out there in a minute, Willis. Uh, he's a former intelligence guy, and he covers Q Anon. Q Anon is uh, an invisible person most likely uh well not most likely they're they're it's they, this person just posts on a lot of message boards and it could be a man it could be a woman it could be a group of people um but it's an anonymous person that keeps coming up with a bunch of information kind of coded information uh cla classified information basically but said in a different way so a lot of people can get online and decode what this person is saying. And some people say that QAnon is not a, it's a completely fake thing. I don't buy it. Because what QAnon keeps saying is, it keeps happening, okay? A lot of the drops that happen from QAnon will be discussed and they'll talk about, hey, this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen, next thing you know, boom, that happens. So, Unless I am completely fooled with that whole situation, I believe that QAnon is a real thing. So Jerome Corsi covers a lot of the QAnon posts, and he, he's, um, he's gathered a, a team of people, basically. And he's an older guy, so he's not the most tech-savvy person, you know. He doesn't have all the hours in the day. He doesn't have the energy that he used to have, I'm sure. And he's got this team of people around him that have volunteered to help 
decode these QAnon posts to help, um, help send out his book. He wrote a book called Killing the Deep State, which is a very good, uh, uh, would be a very good thing for you to do to help purchase that book because if it gets to number one, then he can get out onto the mainstream media and talk about this and get this out. And he is a big key in helping targeted individuals because he does talk about the deep state a lot and the abuse and the corruption that's going on in the deep state. He's even talked about mind, uh, mind control, MK Ultra type thing, and he understands that some of the active shooters and people that are acting out in aggression, it's not really their fault. They're getting mind controlled. They're, they're part of, you know, Operation Bluebird, Operation Paperclip. <laughs> Willis, I'll be out there in a minute, buddy. Operation, the on and on and on that they've used to, to manipulate people's minds and control them, use people as patsies, etc. So um, I'm just using him as an example. He's got all these people to volunteer, and he's got, he's got a crew now, basically, that's, that's working for him and getting the job done. Yeah, they seem to be doing a really good job. You know, the same thing is happening with targeted individuals. And um, the more people that volunteer, the more people that use their expertise, uh, the better it's going to be. All right. Um, before you start doing all this, uh, write out a plan. Write out a plan for you personally, what you're going to do. If you... Uh, whatever your expertise is, whatever the thing is you're good at, write out a plan, and it's hard to figure out exactly what you're going to do in this because it's a brand new thing, but you can write out a plan of action at least to start. Just some ideas, okay, I'm going to make some art, I'm going to um, write out my qualifications, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send my qualifications to this person, this person, this person, this person, send it out to a hundred different people. You know, if five of those people respond to you, and you start building a network with them, you, you've got to start right there. And then you can start to keep adding to your, your action plan what you're going to do. Uh, most successful business owners, they have a five-year plan. They know, they know where they want to go. They know what the goal is, and then they write out a plan of what they want to do to accomplish that goal. Um, when you're writing out your plan, uh, don't, don't think about writing it out tomorrow start. The hardest thing to do with this is to start doing something. Um, especially, you know, when you're so, you're so tired, you're so stressed out, uh, up seems like down, down seems like up. Um, it might be a good way for you to get your mind off of a lot of the stuff that's going on. Start writing out your plan of action. Start writing down notes. I've got pages of notes everywhere that half of them I can't even read because I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll write something down and I'll put it on the side of the bed. And I'll take that, and then I'll compile a bunch of those, and I'll put it into a list. And then I've got something to work with, you know. But you've got to do it right now. You know, like I was, I was watching some commercials popped up for writers. I was typing some stories out on my uh, computer, and these on YouTube, these ads for writers started coming up. And one of the guys was saying, writing's simple. All you have to do is start. And, you know, that's the, uh, that's the same... It's the same with a lot of things. You know, if you don't just get started, you're never going to accomplish anything. So being proactive and doing this now is key. Um, I have noticed that some people that are in the targeted individual community have kind of become uh, targeted celebrities, kind of. Uh, like, they're more known names. There's people that kind of stand out a little bit more and seem like um, they're... Uh, they're just more well known, and I've noticed that some of them are thinking of this kind of like a competition, and maybe posting on somebody's page something negative because that person did something better than they did. Just stop that right now. That is absolutely the worst thing that you can do in this situation is to be competitive with the other people that are on your team. And any targeted individual, you're on the same team. I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, Libertarian vegetarian, whatever, I don't, I don't care. You're on the same team. Um, trying to get targeting to stop on them, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter. So don't be selfish. Don't be, uh, don't be in a competition. Don't view other TIs as 
your competition. Um, if they say something that you don't like about politics, I don't know, I probably said something about politics to piss some people off. Um, I know that other people have said some things that, uh, that I read and I'm like, ah, what the hell is up with that? I still have to keep an open mind and understand that that person uh, views things a certain way, but they're still a targeted individual that's in a very similar situation to myself. And if I can put that aside and I can network with that person still and keep that out of my mind, um, we're still making forward progress, okay? So it's, it's tough to do sometimes. You know, if you're super liberal, you hate everybody on the far right. If you're super, uh, super conservative, you hate everybody on the far left. Uh, whew, it's, it's tough for me to like anybody on the far left. I, communism is horrible because that's part of this. And uh, there you go. I probably just triggered some people, but um, this is this is how communist countries act when they do this kind of thing. Uh, they they have these Stasi police. They have. Uh, no freedom, no, okay, so I'm just going to stop with that. Anyway, put all that aside and work with people uh, regarding targeting, okay? Uh, working together selflessly is, is the only way that we're ever going to win. And, you know, I know this isn't a game. Oh, there goes the dog. I know this isn't a game, and it's not about just the, the W or the L, the win or the loss. Um, but... You, you almost have to look at it that way. Like you are in a tournament, and you've got you've got to get your adrenaline going. You've got to get your mindset right. You've got to get that warrior mentality to where nothing is going to stop you. You're gonna get up early. You're gonna go to bed late. Um, you're going to push through the times of stress, the times that um, you're depressed, the times that you are angry. Take whatever emotion you're having and practice on turning that into forward motion, into action, into something that's going to be positive for you and for everybody else in the situation. Um, that's one of the hardest things to do. And now, I don't always practice what I preach. Sometimes I just say, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to lay on the couch and I'm going to go watch a movie. I'm tired, of I'm tired of all this. I don't want anything to do with it. And I'll do the same thing. So, you know, I'm not trying to be... Uh, a hypocrite here I want to let you know you know I understand what I need to do and I understand um, what it takes to do this but it's really tough to discipline yourself to to take all the proper measures okay um, what am I leaving out oh you know what here read I fall asleep maybe 10 minutes after I start reading something especially if it's not something that I chose to read it sounds exciting to me or whatever it's I've never been a big reader I read small stories I read articles I would like to watch documentaries a lot of what I get my information from is documentaries videos stuff like that I'm a visual learner um, but go get books you know you order these on Amazon this is Robert Duncan CIA uh, agent this is um, project soul catcher okay CIA agent wrote this book he's a targeted individual He's, he's on social media. He's kind of a funny guy, too. <laughs> some of his videos, he, uh, it's funny to see him laugh and uh, you know talk about some of this stuff. And, uh, and this is Dr. John Hall. He's who, the guy that I was talking about a little earlier, working with Jesse Beltran on statistics and uh, a bunch of different things for targeted individuals. And um, this is a book called Guinea Pigs. Now, these guys wrote several books. Uh, there are more books out there. Michael uh, Fitzhubel. Um, oh, geez. I'm sorry to all you people out there that have written books on this. Uh, these are the only two that I've got so far. And um, I, I haven't finished reading these either. But uh, I actually have I've communicated with John. I haven't had any communication with, uh, with Mr. Duncan. Um, but I have had communication with a lot of these people that I've either read their book or part of their book or read their uh, essays that they've done online, uh, watch their videos that they have on YouTube, communicate with them that way. And, you know, I feel like I'm part of a network. Even if something happens to me, if I do get thrown in jail, which a lot of this I'm preparing for, I, I might go to jail. I go to prison five to 15 years for aggravated assault. And it was a setup. It was part of a gang stalking setup. And, um, you know, if I go away to prison, or if I am killed, 
Um, if I am kidnapped and taken somewhere, there is a large network of people that I know are keeping an eye on me. You know, if one of these people just stops posting or, start, or they disappear or something, everybody in the targeted individual community is going to going to realize, hey, you haven't done anything in a while. That's actually what happened today. Somebody mentioned, uh, uh, somebody messaged me today on YouTube and said, hey, you haven't posted a, a video in three days. Are you okay? You know, they were waiting for the next video to come out. That made me feel good. Th thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you helped me get get on the ball here. You know, just something that's that small. You did. You commented on my video and you lit a fire under my ass to to get this done. And you know, you can tell I'm kind of pumped up today. I'm I'm uh, I'm not feeling depressed. I'm not well. I'm I'm a little bummed out. This whole thing is going on still in the world, but I'm excited and I am staying encouraged. I don't know what the sometimes the words escape me. I'm st I'm staying I'm staying motivated is what I'm doing. I'm keeping the, the most positive attitude I can. Um, I know that I'm making the right decision and I'm doing everything I can to help me and to help all of you. And I feel good about that. And that helps me stay motivated. And um, when I get a little message from somebody, if there's just a message on YouTube or Facebook or whatever with some kind of advice or information that I didn't know before or just a little pick me up like, hey, you haven't done a video in three days. Are you okay? You know, that's that's all it takes sometimes. That's all it takes. So stay in contact with everybody. Reach out to people. Even if you don't think you're significant in this whole thing, start being significant. You, you have no other choice. Um, I always feel like I'm forgetting something when I do these videos. I just I just do them on the fly, kind of, and uh, a lot of times I feel like I'm forgetting something. This dog over here is trying to remind me, but uh, all right, that's all I've got for now. You know, stay strong, keep your head up, do everything you can. I I guarantee you, if you start going through some of these applying some of just what I what I just told you just a few of them just make your list and get started on something try to be helpful with somebody else a lot of times um, only helping yourself you won't go as far when you start helping other people it, it starts to have a residual effect um, a snowball kind of effect you start helping other people they appreciate that they not owe you one, but they a lot of people remember that and they're grateful, especially, especially targeted individuals. A lot of people are empathetic, caring, um, intelligent people. And just by you reaching out to one of them, you know, you're going to get your network going. And um, that's that's my best advice for you is just to keep going with this, keep networking, stay positive, and reach out to, to anyone. Reach out to me. You know, I'm on Facebook, Michael Barden on Facebook. On Twitter, Michael uh, at Michael Barden eight, M I C H A E L B A R D E N number eight. Reach out to me. You want to send me a question? You want to send me advice? I love it. I appreciate it. You know, I'll do my best to respond. Um, like I said, I don't always have the most time to do this. I, I run a business. I shipped out five thousand two hundred items last year uh, online, individual items, not like. I have a thousand of one thing and I just ship that out over every single one of those is different. So, you know, I keep really busy. I'm on the same, I'm on track to do the same thing. But I will do my best to uh, respond to you, to uh, keep in contact with you, keep in, uh, keep networking with you, give you information that you, that you might need, and ask for information that I don't have. Uh, that's, all I've, that's all I've got for right now. So I hope everybody has a good night. And... Uh, Stay strong. Have hope.